up right now. Our... Hello and welcome to the uh, organizational change and monetization breakout room of Impact Fest Fund Nine C for C. Um, it's August 11th. Um, you're joined here with the beautiful, beautiful folks. Thank you so much for in, uh, for uh, attending that um, beautiful presentation. Super, super hearts all around. I mean, I am buzzed up, and I think Melanie is on fire with the, the spirit, and I feel like the whole thing is doing really well. And I want to uh, 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 recognize you all, but in particular, uh, the host of this uh, this um, room, uh, Randall Harmon. Um, I know Hi Randall there. through the the uh, the work that he does with uh, Gun Collectively and so many other places, uh, Gimbal Labs, uh, et cetera. So Randall, uh, please come up and uh, introduce yourself and let's uh, start this breakout room. Well, my name is Randall and I am passionate about organizational effectiveness and uh, equity and multidimensional um, outcomes for organizations. And I'm really inspired by the, the recognition in uh in the presentations in the last hour of how there is really a deep connection between the social level and the environment and the other impacts that we make when when we're um, having a society built on one-dimensional um, hierarchical interests we don't get all of the results that we want we only get some of them and uh, largely we get most of the results that the uh, few want rather than mm -hmm. the results that most of us seek. And that's, that's what's motivating to me about the opportunity to um, enable small, new, and developing um, organizations, but also enabling existing organizations and cooperatives that are in the, in the existing regular world to uh, become more effective, become more impactful, and share together in the profit of doing good things in the world. I think we have an agenda. Uh, of presenters today. I wonder if uh, you all might uh, just give uh, a little 30 second introduction about yourself. Yeah. And we might start with uh, Izat Begum. Thank you very much, Randall. And thank you to everybody for organizing this, participating in this event this evening. My name is Izat Begum Rajan. I'm a Fund 9 proposer under legal and financial implementations. I'm an international tax attorney. I've been doing that for 25 some years. Um, and this evening I'm going to talk to you about my project, Lot Tax for Blockchain.io. And I'll tell you more a little bit later. So stick around. Beautiful. And uh, do we have Mercy or shall Harry jump in? Uh, is Mercy there? Okay, <clears throat> uh, so my name is Harry Hellier and um, yeah, we, we run a, a consultancy and coaching firm uh, off-chain, but um, we've been involved in sustainability and, and impact, I suppose, since about 2006. Um, and then before that, I worked in, uh, uh, in big corporates and then in small tech firms. And really what we've done is, is we, we run a model that looks at the commercial and cultural aspects uh, of an organization and that's the point organization not just business but organization and then we build an audit tool that allows you to know where you are across both those uh, lenses and then also drive asset from uh, your income from your profit and the point there is yeah uh, the idea is to grow impact over time by firms under and organizations understanding their full value and then being able to project their value through their purpose and their worth through to impact. So that's pretty much what we do when we do it with lots of firms. I work with Imperial College London, the University of Cambridge, uh, the NHS Sustainable Development Unit, and, uh, and then lots of other sorts of businesses as well. 
uh, and it's a fantastic place to be working in and I'm very, very grateful to it. Um, at the moment, we're learning huge amounts um, from WADA and then from Yoram and, uh, and Laurie and uh, the other guys we're, we're doing little projects with. So uh, it's quite a blessing really and uh, yeah, I'm very, very uh, uh, appreciative of the opportunity. And do I understand that you have uh, two proposals that you'll be speaking on today? No, I think I, I think Goddess Mercy, <laughs> Queen Mercy, is going to be doing the important stuff. As usual in this relationship, uh, as you will understand if you work with Josh and Mercy and Wada, uh, I make the tea. So mm -hmm. I'm going to do a little view of our audit tool that we're hoping to get turned up from a dodgy Excel spreadsheet set into an online tool. And then uh, Mercy and, and Josh are going to do the important stuff. Beautiful. Excellent. And uh, I'll just follow up with a little bit more about myself. I'm a software developer working at the confluence of tech and business for 25 plus years. And uh, I just, I've, I've felt the pains of ineffectiveness and I felt the pains of one dimensional thinking. And um, I forgot to mention a little bit about where I where I come from. So that little bit of, of background on me, just to augment what I said earlier. Why don't we, um, Newman, unless you have uh, something additional to add at this point, why don't we go ahead and dive into, is it Bigum? Yeah, uh, is that, are you the ready? Legal services portal. And I'm, and I, and I wanted to because I, and because you and I are, are friends, I, I I am going to do this. This is this is a a timer, <laughs> and it's five minutes. And I'll just hold it up. I'll just hold it up. You'll be able to see it. Um, and then uh, we, we do want to we do want to be you know right on the time. So I couldn't I couldn't interrupt that incredible love fest that was going on. Uh, but uh, I will interrupt. Uh, I will interrupt here simply because we we want to be by. Um, so that being said, uh, and, uh, the recordings will be chopped up. So I thought about maybe trying to do individual recordings, but I think that might be more, you know, more beneficial to just do a one big recording and then we'll chop them up later. Good deal. So just one question as a, as a native English speaker, uh, do I get twice as long? Cause I'll be talking very slow. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Right. I'll take it away. Yep, that's that's to you. Is Thank that... you very much. So Newman, if you can give me the go mark, and I promise I won't talk as fast as I usually do in real life. <laughs> <laughs> all right, <laughs> all right, here you go. In more. <laughs> Thank you, you so much. So um, as you know, my name is Isid Begum Rajan. I am normally based in Paris, though I've been wandering around for 20 years, but I'm here this evening to talk to you about Law Tax for Blockchain.io. The reason why I'm attending the Impact Fest this evening is because of three things. Number one, because I have been working the, for the bulk of my career um, focusing on Africa, the Middle East and India, uh, pushing for smart businesses to grow, uh, though working nationals and mostly looking at empowering women like myself um, I'm African diaspora that's the reason number two so my focus has been very close to my heart I was lucky to work with the countries that I am originally from uh, due to my roots in East Africa and the Indian Ocean and the third reason why I'm here is because I believe that the impact of the Cardano ecosystem can be massive looking at the variety of projects and it's just very thrilling actually to be part of this group um, and part of this event this evening. So without further ado, um, the problem we're trying to solve is basically to um, help the Web3 and crypto blockchain companies navigate the challenges, whether they're strategic, legal, tax or financial. What I mean by that is that we quickly realize that founders are usually focused on their services, their product, the tech, but they quite often put up to too late anything that is legal, tax, compliance, strategic, financial related, simply because they feel 
either scared or they feel that it's an Everest to climb, they, they feel it's too difficult. We're here to help the community to grow in a compliant manner, in a systematic manner, and through low tax for blockchain.io to help them basically have that seed put into their minds very on through an automated conversational platform. Um, it's a web two tech, but in time we are hoping to make it grow on chain as well. Um, and so it's about guiding them through the different issues. And for us as advisors and a community of advisors behind me, to have data points so that we can then guide that founder um, or venture already post seed funding towards the right advisor for their, you know, responding to the right um, issue they want to deal with in the right location with the most robust uh, legal tax advice and support. Uh, and overall, a strategic view uh, with that. Um, in time, I was telling you earlier that we will be going on chain because we want to propose a directory of, authority, of uh, authoritative information comprising legislation, practitioners, regulatory sources um, that will be validated and written to the chain to ensure that the projects are reliable. Um, this is what it looks like right now. It's an old screenshot because we have added a breakout room session on code and law hosted by A uh, after a Catalyst Town Hall a, a few days ago, uh, but that's the placeholder and we're right now editing the directory so that you can see what it would look like. I'm um, not alone in this. Andrew Forsen is my co-founder. Most of you know him already. He's very well um, connected in the community, already a funded proposer in the past. Uh, involved with Empower, Jogget, Mercy knows him very well as well, uh, the WADA community. I myself have started advising other uh, groups uh, as well outside Cardano community, but these are a few names of the organizations that I work with inside the Cardano ecosystem. And this is Low Tax for Blockchain, basically powered by Imani Partners. Um, thank you very much for your attention. You can hit us on Twitter, um, on LinkedIn, connect with us, call us, and we hope to be able to help you. Thank you so much. Beautiful. And we have, uh, uh, Newman, you're still on mute. You fit just in under the five minutes, so that was, that was lovely. Any questions about legal structures for blockchain? legal services portal? I have a quick contribution. Um, so Isa didn't mention that she's doing a PhD oh, yes. in tax. <laughs> so she is very, very knowledgeable and um, she is willing to help. So I um, had a call with her and Andrew and it was very enlightening. So yeah, just chipping Thank that in Thank you for there. reminding me, yes, Mercy, that I'm actually doing a PhD on taxation applied to crypto assets focusing on utility token. Um, and I think it will be public knowledge very soon, but I was invited by Oxford University to deliver a lecture on the legal and tax challenges uh, relating to the NFT issuance. And that will happen at Oxford at the end of September. So if anybody is around, come and see us. Nice. And Newman, if you check your DM, uh, we've got a little bit of administrative uh, yeah, question. For, yeah, for uh, for Logan, or does anyone does anyone have uh, like a pressing? Because we're over time, I know that people are, uh, uh, you know, that the the time schedule. Sometimes we're we're very very scheduled. Um, uh, would uh, uh, Logan would like to go uh, a little bit quicker. He has about 45 minutes to uh, present. I wonder if he could, uh, if we could allow him to uh, to go um, before and uh, if that's something, it's just like someone uh, who we can help out a friend. If anybody is uh, opposed. Yeah, I mean, I just, I have a call scheduled and 
about 45 minutes. So if other people need to go, we can stay on court. I just want to make sure that I could I could do it before I have to hop off. What do you think? I, I only I actually only have um about that amount of time on the agenda. Uh okay. interestingly though, I don't have your name on the agenda. Oh really? I thought I signed up. Well, I know I did. The, the form. Yeah, the, the agendas did get a little bit um they get crossed up. Um and it is it is open until the time, you know, until the uh until the, the recording stops, I guess. Um the uh yeah, I I have no I have no issues with it. Um, but I am respectful of the time. Uh cool. Um and that's that's tangential to uh any conversation that we might uh, continue about the yeah. uh, legal services portal. Yeah. Uh, I do know that Izzat's is an incredible, um, I've seen her work her magic before uh, and uh, very, very engaging, very, very uh, like uh, astute at, at, at sort of getting, um, you know, doing the consulting type of work. Um, is that, is, is that, you know, what folks do? Is it, it's a consulting, it's a consulting uh, arm it is. Thank you very much, Newman, for uh, allowing me to clarify that. So I, I am an international tax attorney and I've been practicing in large multinationals in-house most of my life, though I have been also with Ernst & Young as an equity partner for Africa, actually. Uh, I was the first and only female partner in the uh, African Francophone Africa Partnership, um, which is which was a challenge in itself, I have to say, uh, which is also why it didn't last that long, uh, mm. about three years. Um, but I have, it, that allowed me to then move on to um, growing as a, I would say, C-suite executive. So I've been a CFO, a COO, a CEO for very large organizations operating in, you know, I would say Southern Hemisphere countries, Africa, but others as well. Um, and, and that basically helps me empathize a bit better, I would say, with um, the founders' issues, the concerns, because they are building their C-suite, their advisory board, looking at operational issues, and their pain points may not be necessarily verbalized as, I have that legal issue or I have that tax concern. Um, and it's for me to try to find my way in their uh, almost therapy session with me and then organize that, help them prioritize, make sense of what is necessary as a must have vital for the business to grow or that can be left a little bit later. So I guide them in that process. So it is consulting rather than me just being an attorney billing by the hour. Um, so yeah. I, I do feel like that's a, that's a, uh... It's an issue that uh, with business owners, especially when they're shifting paradigms, uh, that it can be very unsettling. And uh, yeah, but I, I trust I trust your uh, your professionalism uh, in that way. And I you know sort of the Thank reputation you. is is there for you. Thank you. I think we might just have one more minute uh, for questions. I feel free to just come off mic. Uh, I would love to pick your brain is that. Um, about cooperatives and how blockchain and cooperatives can come together. Um, cooperatives in what sense? Well, cooperative management and just the, like the cooperative structures as opposed to uh, traditional corporate structures of uh, organizational management. I think um, DAOs are really great for that. Now, the issue with DAOs are what legal wrapper can we find? And I think we have had already that discussion with Newman at some point. Um, the issue is that for now it's looked at one legal wrapper per attached to a territory um, in a country. So, or, so Wyoming, Vermont in the US and other jurisdictions that can allow for trust or foundations or uh, corporate forms or, you know, um, I would say that can be registered with the local trade and commerce registry. Um, and that is actually very limitative to what we can do in DAOs. I believe that DAOs are the way forward for collaborative work uh, as a completely opposite way of doing things as what they're done right now in corporates. 
That's number one. Number two, collectivity of DAOs. I think that's going to be the next step. Cross-chain DAOs, um, maybe by uh, purpose rather than by chains, right? Because we're building the strength in the Cardano ecosystem. Tomorrow we're going to have to talk to other chains. And I think that's the only way to go. The more the merrier, the more we reach that, the faster we reach that critical mass, the faster we can make the shift and say, look, guys, we can be a large multinational organized as a collectivity of DAOs. We can hire people. We can employ people. We can make them grow. We can educate them. We can provide food, clothes, you know, from basic needs all the way up to the top of the pyramid of Maslow, I believe. And then the next step could be international law. Could a DAO be a state or a pseudo state? I believe so. But that requires a lot of work because they have to give the power back to the citizens um, in the shape of a voting right attached either to an NFT or a token, but issued by an international DAO. That would be like my dream come true. Maybe at the end of my lifetime. Who knows? Well, don't get her started. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I'm just uh, cognizant of the time, uh, mm. and if if you guys uh, do have questions, feel free to type them in the channel, and we can try to uh, fit more in uh, for the next speakers. Who's up next? Oh, it looks like we have Mercy. Yep. And she's talking today about the Web three education DAO valuation. Okay. Um, yeah. I, there is. Uh, there is a very slight um, modification. It's a two-in-one proposal. So I'm going to uh, present the, the, the mother <laughs> proposal and then the evaluation. I'll just um, you know, give a brief uh, sort of um, uh, a segue in terms of what that is all about. Um, thanks, everybody, for uh, this opportunity. Um, um, Harry um, is, is co-proposer to the evaluation uh, um, uh, proposal, uh, ha has helped us a lot in how we frame and message uh, WADA. Um, uh, Steve is here, he's a direct co-proposer to this one. And, um, you know, as we all saw, uh, Josh uh, has been around. So very quickly, um, let me share my screen. Um, okay. Share. What I'm going to do, I need to make this big. Does that work? Can you see my full screen quickly? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, uh, so, uh, you know, WADA, a lot of us uh, have been acquainted with WADA. Um, it, it's truly decentralized, lots of people with lots of passion trying to make this um, a, a reality. We have three pillars, infrastructure, education, and DAP creation. Infrastructure, just because in Africa there is issues with um, uh, internet and electricity penetration. So what we are doing is uh, within reason to create uh, some oasis where young people can go and uh, be able to uh, think, dream, and develop um, uh, solutions. Education, that's something that we can, you know, most of the people in WADA, we, we do in our, in our sleep. Lots of people on the ground doing a lot of, uh, a lot of fantastic work. And then obviously out of that comes uh, some DAP creation. Um, uh, here are some of the pictures. Um, our events are getting very well attended. We are bringing lots and lots of people into both the WADA and the Cardano Catalyst ecosystem. And that is what um, uh, gave birth uh, to this uh, proposal, the Web3 Education DAO by WADA, because what we realized was that we were doing a lot of work in terms of, in terms of um, you know, onboarding and uh, uh, bringing lots of uh, new people in, but we don't have a structure in terms of how do we run them through um, um, you know, what their interest is, as well as to also, um, and, um, you know, uh, make sure that we are re retaining them. We all know that when, when it comes to uh, uh, Cardano, the platform, we are a bit behind when it comes to uh, easy DAO uh, creation uh, tools. So we thought that, yeah, we'll, we'll throw our heart into, into, into this and then work with other community members to um, uh, develop some solution. Um, so basically what we are trying to do in terms of solution is uh, develop a Web3 education DAO, um, lots of builders, lots of thinkers in this space, um, whatever they are creating, we are happy to uh, test it within our, our, our big community. 
uh, but also to make sure that we, there's some structure in what we are doing in terms of um, our, our, our DAO uh, platform onboarding. And very quickly, and this is where, you know, anytime we talk about DAOs, we talk about uh, what tokens, what is that about, uh, valuation and all that. And that is how the other proposal, which is um, uh, WADA Web3 Education Valuation, that's where it comes in. And that's where uh, we are working with, um, um, <laughs> that's where we are working with Edify and Harry and his team in order to uh, figure out how people can be involved. Um, very quickly, uh, we have lots of uh, proposals. Um, um, uh, these are the links, it's, uh, it's uh, on Linktree. So we have um, uh, what are global proposals. Those, those are quite a few. And then we have uh, specific hubs uh, uh, proposals, a lot of the work that they are doing on the ground. There is a lot of individual members that have taken a lot of initiative, fantastic proposals that they've written. And also we do a lot of uh, collaborative work, you know, as we saw in the main uh, 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 portion of uh, today's uh, work, uh, we do a lot of work with them. We saw Scott and also even Harry and a lot of other people in the ecosystem. So um, that is all for now. Um, yeah, if uh, anybody wants to get in touch, um that's our website lots of information there we have links to our fund nine uh proposals i'm done can you drop the link to that google doc mercy um uh, which one this one the one you were just using yes i would do that thanks for the reminder sure. and what kind of questions might there be I already see Newman being curious about something. <laughs> still got some time left on the clock. We can roll that over. Uh, Newman, you're still on okay. mute. Okay, Randall. Yeah. You know, like you know, what I would drop in, you know, just as somebody who's been associated with water, which has always been a real shock to me that I, I, I I've been associated with people from Africa and get to work with them and everything, but. I, I would just encourage everybody, right? You know, like what, what I, if I do anything for WADA, it's that I, I try to contextualize what they're doing within the Catalyst community as Cardano investing in its own roadmap, right? And I, and I, and I do that repeatedly. I get tired of doing it, but I, it's what all of us are doing, right? We are encouraging the Catalyst community, the people who vote and decide where the funds go, we are encouraging the community to invest in its own future, you know, because if we don't, nobody else will. And, and I think that when you've got a pro project like, like EZ has, and so many people have, this is, this is just a point that has to be slammed home over and over and over again. And I've learned the hard way that repetition is the mother of skill. Right, and we have to become skillful at this collectively and as individual groups and projects. Thanks. Skillful, skillful in like collective action coming together in that way. Yeah, I, 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 I do have to use this opportunity to say thank you for Steve. He's been with us since the beginning. He's been a very strong advocate. I sometimes a bit going against the, you know, against the tide in a sense. So um, yes, thanks Steve uh, for everything. I love that theme of Cardano investing in itself. That it's not, not a fund to just randomly spray money to anybody who suggests things, but, um, or not only that, but like the main thing should be, I think, Cardano investing in itself. And and the, in itself being the the vision and the roadmap. Um, I love the idea that there is a strategy, there is a um, a philosophy and a principle. And that's uh, actually Mercy, your uh, your introduction to what 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 it was was fantastic in the, in the main presentation. Uh, anyone listening to this recording, uh, please go back and listen to that because it is so often it's just ubiquitous. We just see water everywhere, but uh, being able to really hear your voice explain what it is that you and Afi and the whole team are doing uh, was really wonderful to me. 
uh, and it and it is it is Cardano. I mean, you are Cardano, uh, and uh, we're we're making it happen. Thanks, thanks, Newman. Yeah, lots lots of young people. You know, as we all know, um, uh, uh, Africa uh, need, it doesn't need to be said uh, has the youngest population. Um, so, in terms of the future, you know, if we want to be sustainable from a Cardano platform, um, you know, Charles had it right when he sort of. Um, uh, made it from the beginning uh, about Africa and, and the unbanked because that's where the future is, right? Um, so, um, yeah, just trying to elaborate a little bit on what Steve said. And thanks, Newman, again. Lovely. Any other questions? And we'll we'll do uh, something I learned from um, uh, the Conmaverse, which is the sort of the countdown, or was it the Emergo uh, event? But there's we sort of count down and if uh, we can't come up, so I'm vamping a little bit so that you come up with your beautiful ideas and uh, and questions for Mercy. We will hear from Harry next, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, any other final comments? Go ahead, Harsha. Oh, I just had a quick question for Vada. Uh, uh, what kind of resistance did you face in terms of uh, bringing uh, from the local communities into WADA, uh, Mercy? Um, so the main uh, resistance, I would say, is the internet uh, and the electricity connect connectivity, because mm -hmm. people are very willing to, to learn new things. Um, as we know, um, uh, there is a lot of uh, deprivation. So uh, people, you know, if there's something that looks tangible and um, it can help, the young people are all over it. Um, uh, so I would say that the main thing is the internet um, and electricity, electricity connectivity. For us in WADA, it is how do we make sure that we are retaining these people and we are uh, giving them, um, you, know, um, you know, whatever they are investing comes at a high cost to them. We are making it worth their while. So uh, that is one of the main reasons why we are focusing a lot on, on education and uh, trying to create it, this DAO that makes it very consistent um, for investors to come in and to help uh, a lot of these young people. Um, Josh is here. I don't want to put him on the spot. If he has any, you know, any one liner to add, uh, that would be fantastic. Yeah, I'll just echo all of what you said, because I'm sure I'm familiar with it. Right, what is foundation at the moment is education. So that's what we're pulling together a lot of our projects on. It's collectively, how do we educate those that may not be familiar with blockchain? But not only that, those that might not have the financial literacy available to them. So we're looking at all of those areas and seeing how can we pull together our various elements and focus them on education as a foundation. So yeah, I'll add that. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, I don't know if that was for us. Yeah, Logan. Hey, how's it going? I just had a question. Um, <clears throat> wondering what type of DAO tools would, would be most useful to WADA um, and what type of, you know, mechanisms of implementation are, are you guys looking into? Um, just background, I put it in the chat, but I'm part of a, a project building a uh, DAO tooling for Cardano and, you know, always open to collaborate. Really, we're building this technology so anyone can have access to operate an organization in a decentralized way. Yeah, that would will, that will be fantastic. So um, it is a stage uh, for those who are, that are able to look into the, uh, the proposal. Um, at the very, uh, for this uh, phase, um, it's just uh, how do we make it easy for people to sign into our education programs and how do we make it easy, um, you know, sort of to retain them whatever pathway they want. So uh, those, that, that's for the initial. Um, over, over sort of the long term, we are looking at, um, you know, content creators. We are looking at people that might want to um, invest in education. Uh, impact investment. We are looking for um, mentors, um, um, and you know, depending on the work that we do with Harry, we sort of uh, need to figure out what the investment strategy looks like. Um, so um, it's very early days for us. Uh, still, uh, we are still trying to explore and to find out. So every uh, partnership is is very much welcome. So Logan, I'll be looking out for you for sure. Thanks. I just, I just, I just wanted to add, Logan, that you know, figuring out appropriate reputation building 
methods in Africa is going to be unique compared to the rest of the world. And I know that <clears throat> I know that the team in Cameroon is thinking about that, you know, very specifically to that, you know, culture that they have in Cameroon, but a lot of that will bleed over because it's not that dissimilar in, in other places in Africa. But that's that's you know technically that's a big deal. Appreciate that brief note, Steve. Uh, and just to keep our agenda moving along, why don't we shift to Harry? Thank you, Mercy. That was wonderful. Thank you. Mute it, Harry. Thanks, everyone. You're on mute, Harry. I'm not on mute now. No, yeah. you're good now. Okay, so I'm sharing screen and... I'm doing that one, and oh, then, yeah. and yes. I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do the big thing. So that means you'll all disappear, and I won't know what's going on. But there you go. Uh, right. Okay. Let's see if we can do the big thing. All right. So can you see the big screen now? No. No. Uh, so I think I can swap it. Gone. Uh, let's start that again. Sorry. So stop sharing. I'm gonna share the screen. I'm gonna put that one up there, and then. Yeah, make sure if you're going to play a video to, to no select video. the video part. No videos. Okay, good. No videos. No, that's far too complex. Okay. So, can you see it now? Yep. Right. Let's try that. Thing. Okay. All right. There it is. Beautiful. beautiful. Right. Now you're going to okay. have to keep an eye. You're going to have to keep an eye on the time for me, right? I'm now. keeping an eye. I'm starting. I'm starting it right now. Oh no, that's outrageous. Right. Okay. <laughs> so we've said what it's about. Uh, so this one, really, we're trying to do impact and rather than cut the content down, I've just contextualized it and made it faster. So this is a bit like uh, when you do speed, uh, you know, speed business dating, you're doing impacting. So it's speed impacting. So we're going through the speed um, impact burst. OK, so what's it all about? Well, look, normal business growth. Uh, we have to start to talk with companies and not organizations because of what Randall said. So between Randall and Mercy, they've pretty much done my job. So uh, where did we get to? Uh, well, how we measure stuff really out of date. It was kicked off sort of two, 300 years ago. And what it was all about, uh, councils decided that uh, what you needed to know about was things you could kick. Yeah, so that was land, labor and capital. And obviously during uh, the uh, times of the Victorian uh, era, then it was Victorian school children. Um, now, what does that mean then? Well, guys in that basis, when they designed this system two, 300 years ago now, the lens was just about commerce and the context was just about building wealth and the focus um, was just around income. And then the metric you manage that with is just money. And that's what Randall was talking about. And then when you get smart, that's most businesses. Yeah, that's how they operate. Commercial operations, are sales and marketing, production, customer service. So smart businesses, though, what they do, they build those big machines that mean that the uh, uh, small Victorian school children uh, can darn faster and make threads faster. And they got the idea of taking some of their profit, which is the difference between the commercial operations and the business support, and taking that profit out and future investing it. So they don't take all their money today, but they've invested for the future. Uh, and that all sounds cool. What's the problem today? Well. The same accountants that have done this sort of stuff, <clears throat> they've made a horrifying discovery over the last 30, 40 years, which is basically when a business is sold for $10 million, say, uh, the assets, the things you can keep in the business are only worth about $2 million. So where's the $8 million? 80% of most of uh, businesses, not organizations, businesses that are sold. There's no idea where that 80% is. Well, you guys know this. In fact, all these slides I have to front it with I know it's obvious to you, but yeah, they're intangible assets. What's the problem with intangible assets? Well, if you're only using your tangible assets, you only get to see about 20% of what's going on the dashboard, what you see through the front window of, uh, when you're driving along in your business. Uh, what does that mean? If you want to take a full value view then of what's going on, which is where you guys live, and you want to start to run to impact, you do that through starting off understanding purpose and then understanding worth and then running that through to impact over time. So what a super smart impact led future fit businesses do? It's not that difficult, really. First thing they do, they understand this business about commercial operations. 
But then they have another lens, which is cultural operations. And, Time check. Uh, what does that mean? Uh, it's a request for uh, Newman to check the time. Yeah, oh, we're right. good. He's about halfway. Oh, cool. Right. Okay. So the lens is cultural and commercial. Context is wealth, but also well-being. The focus is income, but capability of the people, because this is all about people. And the metric is money plus happiness. And that's the issue. Because when you're super smart and you've sorted out your capability, you can only measure that with happiness. You can't measure it with money. So from that point of view, then, uh, where are we? Uh, companies that understand that, then they build their organizational assets out. Uh, they get really smart. They then understand their performance strategy. So this is all the stuff around leadership, uh, culture, communications. It's around knowledge management. It's around succession planning. All the things that we as people do that's brilliant but it's really hard to measure. So lens, cultural and commercial, context, wealth and well-being, focus, commercial and cultural assets. The whole point of that one then is then when you build in purpose, which is the thing that ties those two things together, then you're talking about, you can now talk about having intent, which is a cultural, uh, a cultural metric, and you can have a vision, which is a commercial one, and they can be tied together for a purpose. And then your aim of your purpose is cultural and commercial makes you worse. So the aim of your purpose then, that then drives to impact. So we now take that point where we've got transactions and relationships. So we're building assets across the bottom then, we've got one access into capability and income and that helps build worse. But if we project that over time for our purpose, then we end up with our future investment is impact. So what's the fun of that? Well, for you guys, uh, particularly the monitoring stuff, what's happening then is if you're trying to do the hard stuff, yeah, which is a cultural asset, it's really hard. It's intangible, it's huge base, and it's usually a service. If you want to do the slightly easier one about assets, about cultural assets today, it's intangible, but it's now based and it's probably a service. If you want to flip into easier, then you just go for building assets that are commercial because they're tangible, future based, and physical. If you want to be super easy, you just do stuff you can sell today. So, and here we are yeah. at the five minute mark. You got to wrap that's up at the course? five minute mark. So, that's cool. We got another 30 seconds, if that's all right. Yep, that'd be great. That'll be a lie. It's a minute. So, uh, <laughs> how does that play out? That's um, all right. Again, in this space, though, what's really hard, what's really easy is when you're trying to work out what the, what the profit is from a car or a tin of baked beans, it's tangible. When you're trying to throw that into an asset, you build a manufacturing plant. That's not so hard. When you're having people dealing with stuff today, that's treatments, lessons, rubbish collection. That's more hard because it's a service. The hardest one is when you throw that to the future and you're building a hospital and running a school and running government. So uh, what's the thing about that? You can measure those things, but it's a narrative. And the narrative then builds into an audit book. And the audit book then shows you value over time, but it's internal, not external. So uh, this is the last bit, then how does that show up? Uh, the accountancy organizations then, when you've got social organizations, the issue is the accountants want to measure business and money, and they think of other organizations, social organizations as a charity. So how can you deal with that? You start to think what you do as a social impact organization. So you've got commercial programs, social programs, you don't care because you own it, you're on the front foot. Last little bit then. Um, and this is the bit, this is some hard, I didn't mention this start. This is the hardcore consultancy advice for the whole of the climate-based uh, uh, initiatives. Yeah. Showing full value impact is a complex challenge, but it gets exponential growth. So what do you want to do? Do you want to worry about intangible future-based services, which are hard to understand? Yeah. Or do you want to start to understand intangibles today? Tangibles, which is simple, but assets. Or do you want to do selling stuff today? Well, look, let's have a quick look at that. How does that play out? If you want to be really difficult, you go for regen agriculture because it's about service. If you want to be simpler, do hot yoga because it's hotter. If you want to, if you want to uh, understand and build an asset in the commercial space, you build an air conditioning factory. If you just want to make money today, which is super cool, you sell hats. So. Uh, climate change, what should you do? Forget all the hard stuff, all those really complex things. Just sell hats. <laughs> or is it? 
And the last message in there is, look, guys, why, why we go through so much pain? And you're the ones doing all the brilliance. Why are you going through so much pain with this? You're trying to explain an intangible service, not today, but thrown into the future. So cut yourself some slack and enjoy. Thank you very much. Beautiful. Do you have some links to drop in the chat, maybe? Uh, no, but uh, I don't well, know. a link to your proposal? I got a link to the proposal, yep. Super. So, <laughs> I imagine uh, some kind of a scorecard that can show, you know, the multidimensional stuff. Here's here's the the cultural impact that we're uh, showing up with internally to the organization or even outside the organization. Here's the um, here's the social impact. Here's the environmental impact. Yeah, sure. that, that, that's what we've got around we've got a full set of a huge excel spreadsheet or there's a load of areas sit behind the, the global one i did and those are all broken down over you do an audit where you are today and then you run design thinking so you set a vision you map out the gaps and then you put a plan in place to get to the next level and then you do the same and the same and the same and that's how you can run your organization like you said at the start though the important bit is it's not just the commercial lens so you can start to have a narrative that captures all that well-being and happiness-based stuff, and then you can do a full audit. So like I said, you actually nailed it right at the start. Beautiful. That's great, that's great. We still have a little bit of time for questions. So maybe one, one other question. I'd say key takeaways from Catalyst so far. From, from your perspective, I know we've talked a lot about how it's Ooh. been developing over time, but yeah, I thought it's an interesting perspective for other people to hear it as well because you've been in the industry for quite a while and you've seen, you know, since Linux and open source and you've had a view of all of it. So I always take the opportunity to share that with others when, you know, when we can. Yeah. And again, that's a you're just a bad man, aren't you? Because that's a super yeah. question. Um, I tell you what, <laughs> my learning the catalyst, um, and I talked to Dean quite a bit about this as well over the sort of going through all the cycles since before the dot com and everything. My learning is this time around, I spent the last five or six years, as you guys know, sorting out a valuation model, sorting out how to build an impact bank, all that stuff. Now, offline, I find that really hard because most people have an awareness, but they, they have they either have an awareness but no impetus or they they don't have the awareness or impetus and that's totally cool because this is all about kicking stuff up being in catalyst though uh i always love working with devs whether they're business devs organizational devs or techie devs and we do a lot of technology stuff but could the catalyst stuff for me like today when we do we kicked off that first hour everyone's on the same page and, and as you as you guys know josh I don't really do the emotional, that's amazing stuff because I'm a bit old for that. However, it is amazing because the intent behind all the stuff everyone does and the collaboration is just fantastic. And, uh, and it gets bigger, not smaller. And what has changed, the pace that people do brilliant stuff at because they collaborate and they understand teal organizations and all that, it's just incredible. And it's been an absolute pleasure to be involved in it. Beautiful. Nice. That's lovely. Yep. Thanks. We had Logan on the agenda. I was going to uh, slot him in right now, but it looks like he popped over to a different room, probably to take advantage of some available time over there. No, he's still oh, there. I, he's still there. Logan, <laughs> do it. Let's oh. do it. Quick, quick. Jump in before, because I was like, oh, we're going to be hard, which is fine. Hard is good. But would you please, uh, just a real brief, as, as fast as you can? Yeah, give me two minutes. I'll show you what, what we're working on. Okay, cool. Um, All right, cool. Um, Sorry about that. Somehow my Zoom was uh, acting a little funny, so I didn't see you. No worries, no worries. Yeah, so essentially what we're building is a, um, a DAO spin-up platform. So anyone can create a DAO on the Cardano blockchain um, and participate. So essentially, very quickly, um, I'll go through it. You connect. What happens is you connect your wallet and by scanning all the assets in your wallet, um, the platform and protocol knows what DAOs you're a part of and how much stake you have in each DAO. So to create a DAO, this is what it looks like. Um, and you can customize certain governance rules. 
my computer's moving slow right now, but essentially what you can do is this is off chain information, put the name of the DAO, the logo, whatever it may be, the description. And then this is really where the smart contract stuff comes into play. So what you do is you put in the policy ID of your governance token so that the governor smart contract knows what asset to look for when governing this organization. And then you can do certain uh, governance rules, customizations for your DAO. So you can say um, an individual or a wallet needs to hold this amount of this governance token in order to have access to create a proposal. This amount of people need to co-sign a proposal for it to be considered legitimate. And then you can also set the proposal approval rating. Is it 51? Is it 60%? Um, and then you can also customize your um, proposal pipeline. So what, how long is each phase of your proposal lifeline? So the draft period length, the voting period length, that all that good stuff. Um, so quickly, the other part of this is you can see all your proposals you're a part of based off the assets that are in your wallet. And you can click in, um, see proposal details, cast an on-chain vote um, from the app. And you can also create proposals uh, for your DAO as long as you have enough. So out of the box, we'll have four different proposal things that you can have. You can do a proposal to spend treasury funds, update your governance parameters that you set when you create the DAO, um, yes, no, or multiple choice. Um, so those are the, the proposals you'll be able to submit to your DAO to be voted on um, out of the box. And say you wanted to update governance parameters, you could click that and it's, you know, it's too much to be able to create a proposal. You want to lower that threshold, you choose that parameter and you can put in that value. Um, but yeah, so voting, I'm not going to get into this, but voting is controlled by staking to protect from double voting. Um, your stake within the DAO is locked while you participate in a proposal. Um, but yeah, that's kind of an overview of the platform. I appreciate you guys a lot. Just giving me a, a few minutes to talk about it. I think, you know, we're happy to work with anyone really why I'm involved in this project is because I wanted to make it out and on Cardano, it was just too hard and you have to pay too much money, uh, to find the developers, to get the audits. And we really want to bring this infrastructure so that DAOs can really become a mainstay and people can start experimenting with impactful and decentralized organizations uh, at a quicker pace um, so we can get further faster. There you go. Those are some beautiful uh, essential tools. Like if, if you don't have those, you don't have a DAO. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we're really trying to build the bottom Legos of DAO infrastructure. And, you know, as we expand on this, we really want it to be a community driven protocol where, you know, new smart contracts can be added to it. Um, and the financial incentives for, you know, what smart contracts are getting used is, is, is aligned with how it should be. Um, but yeah, thank what, you for giving what it, So, uh, in other, please jump in with other questions, but I'm curious as to, and you know, for the whole group, the idea between a protocol and, uh, and uh, application or yeah like like what would these things be interoperable um like all the different tool all, all the different tooling now that's coming out um would it be something that you would you would spin up with your tool and then all the contracts are created i know that the um i saw a little um snippet on the adao uh mm -hmm. that was like if if their tool like roundtable or something went down that you would still have access to it, it is that is that is that something that's common to the to the whole group of these new DAO tools or? Yeah, so we actually had our first DAO Alliance meeting. Um, if you are interested in in learning about more about DAOs, um, yeah. I mean, I know you know this is a, a group that is coming together. It's it's mostly people building DAO tools in Cardano. So what I will say for um, what we're building is is we're leveraging Agora, which is a open source. Uh, governance module uh, built for decentralized organizations that want to operate on the Cardano blockchain. Um, and there will be other protocols that build on top of this module that, you know, provide tooling and, you know, a no code interface so that people can create DAOs, customize governance rules, um, and also extend the capabilities of Agora. But by, by these protocols all using this, you know, bottom layer basic building blocks of, of Agora, all these, you know, whether you're in a DAO and you use Clarity or you're in a DAO and you use a different platform, if they're all leveraging Agora, you'll be able to, you know, use different platforms to be part of your DAOs. Um, 
but that's something we're really looking at closely with this DAO alliance is how do we make sure things are interoperable because users should have access to whatever tools they want to use and not be in a siloed DAO environment. That's not how it should work. Yeah, that seems like that's a step backwards. Yeah, 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 for sure. Definitely. I love that you're putting uh, a reasonable UI on, on a uh, low-level protocol that wouldn't be accessible to anyone unless they uh, know how to code or um, you know, can afford to pay for somebody who does. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, lowering the technical barrier to entry to participate in decentralized governance on, in this type of way, I think will be truly powerful. Hey, Arsha. Uh, hey, Logan, quick question. Uh, I mean, the tool is really great to use, but I also do think there is some level of education that the community needs uh, to be able to leverage these tools, right? So in terms of educating the community, uh, do you know how uh, Clarity wants to go about that? Yeah, um, we're really starting with projects in Cardano that want to operate as DAOs. Um, we actually have a proposal in to run a DAO incubator and there we'll have a series of, of classes on tokenomics, on um, you know legal, creating a DAO and making sure it's compliant um, and, and other classes like that, that are important for, you know, if you're trying to start a project that is to operate as a DAO, what do you have to look out for? What do you have to know about? Um, what are the, you know, features that you can add to your DAO that make it more decentralized, but, you know, less efficient and more central in, yeah, so we have a short story I'm, I'm rambling on now, but we have a proposal in for a DAO incubator and we'll have 10 classes, uh, not classes, but open kind of forums where ex industry experts will come in and um, talk to the DAOs, the early stage DAOs about, you know, this is the legal implications of being in this jurisdiction or, you know, whatever it may be. Um, but there's a lot more to do. I don't think we can do it all. Um, and education is so important because um, I know, when I tried to onboard my dad to get a NAMI wallet, it took like 40 minutes. And I'm like, Dude, <laughs> if this is going to reach mainstream adoption and I can't even get someone to open a wallet quickly and I know what I'm doing, like we got a ways to go. So <laughs> it's different. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Well, at WADA, we're working on education DAOs. We also need to be thinking about DAO education. So it's the, it's the flip side. So yeah, we'll keep that in mind and see what we can do. I'm sure Mercy will reach out. So see what we can awesome. do. Awesome. Sounds good. Almost. The music sounds good too. Logan. Uh, Josh always hangs out in the cool places. I almost, Logan, I almost put in a proposal titled, I'll onboard your grandma. You know, <laughs> just to see what would happen. <laughs> And the only reason that I didn't was I was afraid I would actually get funding and have to do it. <laughs> oh, God. Uh, Does that include mother-in-laws as well? Because I have one of those that you could uh, certainly do some work with. <laughs> I'm better with mother-in-laws, yeah. Oh, my goodness. Well, we joke, but there's a, a growing community called Cardano for Seniors, you might be aware. So, you know, watch, watch this space and see what we can do with them. Yeah. Well, I, I'll tell you, uh, and, and Lucas, I know I see you got your hand up, so go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just wanted to point out <clears throat> for what Logan was saying. So they, they're, they have their Clarity DAO protocol and etc. But I wanted to point out that they're leveraging on the Agora model. And I think this is, could be very meaningful because they're not just making up, obviously it should be very flexible, but they're not just making up what a DAO is and how it can run. They're basing themselves on this model, which I think is cross-chain, correct, Logan? So, and, and this aligns a, little, a lot with what Zat Begum was, was mentioning about the legal terms that on um, DAOs being cross-chain. Uh, and so maybe this could be sort of a, a translation layer uh, because if they're agreeing not just to use the same platform, but more on a basal level to use the same model, uh, maybe that could give us some precedent on, on the legal grounds, right? And that's my contribution. Yeah. Well, that's a whole can of worms that we probably don't have time to really get into. <laughs> yeah, I just I just spotted that and I wanted to reach to just point it out. Cheers. Yeah. Thank you. And thank you, Logan. Thank we you. are, yeah, 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 yeah. Let's let's have a little admin and thank, yeah, Logan, that was fantastic. I'm glad that you're able to get in there. I, you know, it's uh, 
yeah, this is the spot for you for sure. Um, you know, H Harry's Harry's idea or of this sort of new new paradigm in business accounting and audibility, audibility, you know, like measuring, like that's the special thing that I want from a DAO, from a new way of organizing. You know, uh, that there's that there, that we do it better. It was one of the things that Hoskinson talked about. It's just like if we can look, at, you know, everyone in the face and ask them, ask our grandparents. You know, ask our you know people to relearn all of this stuff, and the and that the promise is that we do it better. Um, you know, so I'm hopeful, uh, but I'm also a bit leery. Uh, maybe maybe from seeing the waves come come before. But likewise, a point that Harry made that um, that there it does have a different feeling to me. The collaborative thing, the sort of you know um, yeah hope and opportunity thing, which I've not caught before. Um, we are getting towards um, the uh, you know the end, Randall. I think we've got a we've got a pretty presentation from you coming up. I if, if that's a... yeah yeah, I'd love to jump into that and blast through as quickly as may be. Um, we have a proposal. There's a link in the chat here. A link to a video, uh, three minutes that give you essentially all of the mechanics and the mechanisms of what we're proposing to do. And uh, rather than spending time on that, I'll let you click that video link and uh, just tell you that the problem statement is that today's catalyst process and tools aren't really supportive of experiments in process and governance and allocation of funds. Our challenge setting process lacks continuity and our ecosystem suffers as a result. Um, we want to build a modular environment based on our platform it done collectively for the community to test objective setting, create more continuity in the way we allocate funds, and um, pilot a model of proposal prioritization and evaluation and other new techniques. This is all aligned to the Catalyst GPS process. And um, I'm really grateful for the way that Tommy and the rest of the GPS team showed up with this uh, structure for uh, leading a new opportunity for Catalyst to outgrow what IdeaScale has been able to provide. Um, we, I, I have a vision of enabling um, our organizations to have impact on these multiple dimensions and not just on the financial dimension and to have the governance structure of the organizations uh, be honoring the different elements of their mission their vision and their values so that they can uh, be having the cultural impact that they that they want to have and not just that financial impact. And so in this proposal, we're looking at how to evaluate um, evaluate proposals and catalyst on these finer points of granularity. So rather than having just three particular uh, dimensions of evaluation uh, that we could have, five, six, seven dimensions of evaluation and have those points of evaluation be specific about certain values or about certain objectives that um, we have in scope. Uh, I imagine increasing efficiency of the proposal assessment process through this mechanism so that we can be evaluating more assessments with the same amount of effort and build greater momentum, uh, statistical significance, and better wisdom of the crowd through that statistical significance so that we can limit the influence of un, uh, the undue influence of bad actors. Um, and really, we want to create greater continuity in the direction and the impact of the Catalyst uh, Treasury. And um, there's kind of an analogy that someone made earlier to, to permaculture, that like permaculture is about um the the land but there's just as much there's um a regenerativeness that we can bring to organizations and uh that's that's part of our vision at done collectively um what else can i say briefly what's my time check uh newman no yeah you still got about half still got about half oh sweet um so i'm talking fast enough which is sometimes a problem for me <laughs> uh, but you just said the permaculture of of business organization. And I thought that was like a, a head blower. That's great. That's fantastic. Yeah. 
I, I was inspired by the, the, Harry, by the uh, Harry, Harry does it. Harry does it. Listen, there's some catalysting going on and look, I'm, I'm flipping in here. There's some catalyst going on in here um, that, you know, like we are better together and it's not kind of a, just a, an aphorism. It's not just a thing. It's just that the, when you get into the collaborative space and it's not, it's science, you know, it's just like, there's, there's magical things going on here. Um, and this breakout room, like when I saw it started coming together, um, you know, I was really, really happy to be involved. So, so, um, yeah, yeah. Now I put your time back on. <laughs> I'm, I'm totally stoked that we're here at the almost three hour, uh, over two and a half hours and we still have 15 participants in our, yeah. in our yeah. breakout room. That's <laughs> awesome. Um, one of one of my aspirations, and I share this with Tommy, um, is to enable greater efficiency in the way we use our calendar time as a community. Calendar time costs so much um, money for just keeping people safe during during the passage of those those months. And you know, I hope that we may be able to respond quickly to a high impact, well planned project opportunity, and not wait three to six months to be able to fund such a thing and uh, create a more fluid funding process and maybe even limit the costs, the human costs, um, not least, of deciding not to fund a project proposal that's just not on mission, that's not on values. But oh. it's not up to me. It's up to the community. And that's that's what we want to enable. We want to enable the community to come together in a consensus uh, and build momentum for the values and the objectives that the community wants to feel together. Hmm. One of the challenges that I see is um, if if we are using such a process to kind of prioritize what objectives in the GPS framework that um, that we want to prioritize, that there may be some case where there could be starvation of some of the objectives just through the prioritization process. And, and I think we've already seen some of this. Um, so, so much of this fund nine has gone to DAPS products and integrations that there were some other um, relevant and important objectives that the community would say we hold that just didn't get funded. And like, there's no category for swarm to be funded in nine. Well, what the hell's up with that? Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my hope is that we can find a solution to this challenge and enable um, even some of our lower priority objectives to still carry enough budget uh, to support the, the things that we feel are important um, and not only the the things that are most interesting or most sexy. And could we provide evidence to the Cardano treasury that this level, some arbitrary level of quarterly funds is not the right level. And maybe the right level is smaller or maybe the right level is bigger. That's one of my hopes. Done Collectively is creating an organizational operating system and ecosystem platform to enable people to form and operate their organizations and coordinate impactful work within and between organizations and to share meaning, influence, rewards, and trust. Bravo, We're creating elements Rick. of, uh, oh, sorry, it sounded like the, the capper. <laughs> it did sound uh, like the capper. I mean, I, that's... Mm -hmm. Beautiful. Um, I'll, I'll leave that as the capper and just say one other thing about how you can help uh, with the Dunn Collectively mission. Uh, impact investors are welcome. We've been running on minimal budgets and we need to shift to true sustenance for our contributors. And we need to be able to hire more contributors, onboard, train, and uh, build the ecosystem as, as an ecosystem and not as a centralized development organization uh, also. Watch for our coming ISPO event where your delegation can support our impact mission, pay for subscriptions to our product, or your rewards can be converted to a contributor stake in our cooperative, and you can earn a profit share by helping with the management. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bravo, bravo. Do we get questions? 
Yeah, of I course, hope. of course. Yep, yep, yep. I will flip it over for questions. I, I, I suppose mine wasn't really so much a question, so I don't know much about them collectively. It was more of an observation. Um, I think, as we said, and I went to speed through some of our stuff, but a lot of what, what we do sits in the space you're talking about, Randall. My observation, though, was really um, from when Logan was talking, and that's the thing around the models that we use uh, are out there. Yeah, with accountants where they're trying to understand how they can make that valuation uh, fit the, the commercial and the cultural bit. And the way they do it is they chip at it and they try and put things in place. So they're doing it from the outside in. Um, the issue, with, and that's how you do uh, impact valuation. And again, I'm not an expert in impact valuation, but you know, when you've got goals where you put in place, again, a top down, outside in view of the world and you say, right, okay, uh, your farming business uh, uses pesticides, so that's going to be bad on the environment in 20 years' time, and so your impact evaluation will be X. So that's your ESG goals and stuff like that. My fear uh, and understanding of how these things work is what you guys were talking about. What it means is those things will get mapped out more, and you will have intangibles, and you will have uh, well-being and you will have happiness they were the narrative and those all the elements will get built because we've already got a lot of them already that we use uh, the issue is they will be owned by somebody who is an accountancy firm and that's already in place with a lot of this stuff and those guys obviously they want to be able to use all those tools so that they can they can audit what's going on both today and in the future and centralize it so the model that we run to is this business about your competitive and then you bump up to being collaborative, and then you bump up to being integrative, which means you're doing good for both of you plus your customers. Then you bump up to being generative, as you guys know, which means you're trying to do the best for everybody. Well, these guys, these actors in that space don't think that way. And I think as uh, Isat was saying and Logan was saying, that's the need for the DAO. The need for the DAO is to have the control of those audit tools decentralized. And for decentralized organizations to be able to run them internally, but also then be able to claim their space externally. And that's my fear really um, with what you were talking about, Randall, is those systems are being put in place from the outside in as well, but they will be owned by centralizing actors. My hope would be that we can create the accounting systems using crypto tokens that do actually account in a decentralized way for yeah. the, all those multidimensional outcomes and uh, create interdependency between the, the those different assets and between different organizations that are collaborating, you know, apply some of uh, Eleanor Ostrom's principles of, uh, you know, co-managing uh, resources. And I, I don't know how much that applies to some of these abstract notions of like social impact but i i have an intuition that um even though uh yes. you know some some things are more tangible and limited and like physical assets uh that that some of these intangible assets can also be managed in similar ways maybe with some added pitch you can always factorize them back to cash mm -hmm. you can always have it as a uh, as a factor of going back to cash i think the fun bit what you just said um, intuition uh, is an intangible asset because the whole point about R&D is you're codifying and crystallizing the brilliance. Mm -hmm. And that is put on a balance sheet by the accountants along with positioning or brand and uh, channel management or, or services. So there, there are intangible assets that sit in a brand model, but they've been developed by accountancy firms and they will use them to own things. That's my humble opinion. <sighs> yeah, that's fantastic. I imagine there being markets for those things that so it's not, you know, just held by those those individual organizations, but decentralized ownership. Exactly. And that, that's the thing about being on top of that and using the brilliance of you guys to be able to be ahead of that curve. Harry, I got to say, I feel, I, I have felt not just toward you, but toward like, pretty much all of the the things that i've seen today it's like the 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 feeling is that wow the, these people are all all doing parts of the work that i feel is mine <laughs> yeah, yeah thank you thank you so much
<laughs> which, yeah, I'd say that's Josh's brilliance when he was spiking me earlier with his smart question, because that's what he does with his huge brain. That's what he's talking about, isn't it? It's all, hopefully, it's all starting to come together to go over that curve. Yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, just, just to share, I, I feel the same. The work that you guys do in supporting us and, and vice versa, it, it's really the, the add to multiply that we talk about at WADA. So, yeah, grateful. I'm loving, I'm loving the transition into, you know, um, appreciation, affirmation. Um, we are getting, and I'm mindful of the time, you know, um, uh, per, per usual, uh, we're getting to just over an hour. So that feels like a great time for uh, shutting down the recording, but not shutting down the meeting, certainly not shutting down the conversation, which will happen asynchronously as we fan out through this big organization that uh, we call Catalyst, that you guys are all talking about how, how wonderful it is to feel a part of it. But I do want to open up the space just to sort of, if you want to get on the recording, get your voice out on there. If you haven't done, um, uh, let's uh, let's just uh, we'll do the other the other timer and just sort of let for five minutes. Newman, I have to say your your wrangling has been awesome. Yeah, your contributor wrangling is ten out of ten. You <laughs> let me get away with two minutes, which was rubbish. I, well, I, I was like, this is a test. This is he's testing me right now. Oh, dang it. I just I couldn't do it. I was a big battle in my brain, big battle in my brain. But I think it worked out great. It was Randall that I was worried about. I was like, oh, no, I know. Because boy can talk. <laughs> mm. Just because I do have to hop off to my next meeting, uh, I'll just say a, a couple words that you know, to see Harry, to see Randall, to see, you know, Newman and Cole and everyone else who we've been speaking with all collect around the, the vision or the mission of impact and impact driven work. It is always a pleasure, right? I heard Mercy at the start of the meeting, you know, she had some people in tears just about how much she was speaking from the heart. And that's, that's why we're all here. So I'll just say, you know, we're, we're continuing on this journey with you all and, and it's such a pleasure. So with that, I will see you next time <laughs> thanks josh thank you for sure for sure Whew. it's recording time's going off thanks y'all i'm gonna pause